Ah, Geek, Geek Out! Hey, and welcome to another Geek Out commentary. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. I'm Josh. And it's Halloween! Ah! Ah! Happy Halloween! So this concludes our Halloween Horror Month for the year. You know, we've kind of had a big passing this year with, with Gene Wilder. You know, he was... What would you say? Your, my favorite Gene Wilder performance was uh, Blazing Saddles. Uh, I, I'm actually more partial to this, Young Frankenstein. Mine's, mine's still Willy Wonka. Holds a special place in my heart. This one. So, as Chris alluded, we're doing Young Frankenstein as the, and the title of this episode. Yeah. We, we're doing... Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, for a split second, I was like, do I say it? But I was like, they, they clicked on it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole Facebook post and web page. People needed to have the DVD up and ready to go. Yeah. So, we're doing, you know, Young Frankenstein to kind of close it out. Which honestly kind of works for me because, as I said at the beginning of this, you know, whole spiel, I, I kind of like the the goofier, the goofier horror movies. Mm-hmm. If the, you, this even qualifies, but you know, it's Young Frankenstein. It's it's for me. It's like the last unequivocally good Mel Brooks film. Like there's Mel Brooks films I enjoy afterwards, i.e., Spaceballs, Robin Hood, Men in Tights. But this is the like this is the high water mark of Mel. There was a period where he could do no wrong. And this is like the kind of the end of that period, mm-hmm. including this film. So, you guys have any memories of Young Frankenstein? Um, I I, I remember enjoying it, you know, uh, watching it, you know, as a kid. Uh, yeah, it, mm. it's 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 it uh, it's probably the the incarnation of Frankenstein that I've seen the most. Yeah, I've ah. actually never seen this all the way through. Oh, I remember loving it right up to the musical number. You don't like putting on the Ritz? Mm, not Ooh. in this movie, no. <laughs> we, all right, that's fair enough. Let's go ahead and kick it off. Yep, so we are watching my DVD version of this movie. You should be good with whatever medium you have. We have the movie all set up and ready to go. Counters at all zeros, so make sure you have that ready to go. And then in five seconds, I'll tell you to hit play in five, four, three, two, one. I remember uh, hearing uh, Mel Brooks say that it was really difficult for him to convince the studio to let him shoot this or at least present it in black and white because um, uh, at the time that this film was made, a lot of their like um, foreign outlets, uh, like, like a lot of the smaller ones, had just transitioned into being able to show color movies, uh, you know, so like they were like we, we we just got color to these markets. Why do we want to? Why would we want to alien or not alienate them? But like you know, kind of like take them backwards in time to uh to you know to a black and white movie. And Mel Brooks was Mel Brooks was really uh you know st- um uh Steadfast. yeah on his uh, stance that it needed to be in black and white. So you had the real feel of a classic you know Frankenstein movie. And I applaud him for that. Well, he was a big fan of the uh, early, like, universal horror films. And so a lot of the props for Frankenstein or Frankenstein, whatever, mm-hmm. his lab, are from yeah. the original, like, 1931 Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah, Landis is in this. Monty Landis. <laughs> the little known, the, li- <laughs> the littlest known Landis. <laughs> Probably not related. And a Michael Fox, but not of the J variety. Mm-hmm. Mm. Madeline Kahn. I'm a big fan of Madeline Kahn. Mm. I love her in Blazing Saddles. For me, um, her movie is always Clue. Mm. 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 So they even kept up with the tradition of like doing like the full credits at the beginning, because uh, back in the day. That was the tradition to actually have like everything right there up at the front, well, and then directors guild rules. Yeah, and George uh, Lucas was like, "Fuck that," and then uh, and then uh, it started to become in fashion to you know show like you would still you would show the credits at the end, uh, you know, like the 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 um, what is it? Um, not George Orwell, um, Orson Welles was like another good crew deserves another mention. Or you know something like that, um, and then uh, 
So like you started getting credits at the end of the movie. And then in more recent years, you would get like a highlight reel of the credits at the beginning of the movie and then the full credits at the end. Ooh. You usually don't see the full full name from Mary Shelley. Yeah. Wollstonecraft. And it's cool that Gene Wilder and Mel Brooks came up with this one themselves. Yeah. Oh, that got picked up on the mic, didn't it? My bad. Mm. Mm. It's better than when you used to eat chips. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get away from the mic. <laughs> they chips. Yeah. <laughs> it's always going to go through. At least my mic's not so sensitive that even if I'm 10 feet away, it still hears me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Josh. I do like how they don't kind of, like it's a comedy, but they don't shy away from the horror elements. Like it's a fucking coffin. Like you'll see like a fucking like grave getting robbed later. You know, it's it's still very much, you know, true to the source material. Yeah the the comedy the comedy is in the um, the action. Yeah. I want to have my name in giant letters on my coffin. And be a baron. And do that. But not look like that. <laughs> I want to look like that when I'm dead. You already look like that. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, our first gag. Are those Mel Brooks' hands? They might be. You know, Mel Brooks' son, Max Brooks, wrote World War Z. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of that. Mm. And also its predecessor, um, How to Survive... uh, uh, What the hell? Um, Uh, Zombie Survival Guy. Yeah. The book World War Z is, you know, as to be expected, much better than the movie. He was like, they didn't even ask me for a draft. (laughs) I have nothing to do with World War Z. I was like, well, that's fine. That works out for you. It needed to be a TV series where each episode has a completely different cast, you know, like uh, Twilight Zone style. Mm. 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 I do like that he keeps the same transitions, like the same like that uh, James uh, James Whale used for the Frankenstein films, with the the zooms and the wipes and the every pinhole. Thanks for the exposition, kid. Even Gene's tired of that shit. They bring in the uh, guy that plays the preacher from Blazing Saddles. Also the judge in What's Up Doc.
(laughs) 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 What did he just do to me? <laughs> Celery. Celery. <laughs> <laughs> I just love his reaction when he takes it. Just like, oh, oh. <laughs> Ooh. Well, to be fair, at that time, that's probably you know like an extra twenty. He would never pee well again. <laughs> Yo, Jake, what do you call a baby worm? Worm. (laughs) (laughs) Wasn't our Halloween, like actual Halloween, Halloween pick last year, Frankenstein? Yes. How fitting. (laughs) Brother. Our Tinker Toys! <laughs> Tell us how you really feel about it. <laughs> I feel like most of this commentary is just going to be us giggling at the the jokes. Because this movie is fucking hilarious. If yes, you, no, I'm not complaining yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, I'm just saying, if you at home have never seen this film before, pause this commentary, watch it, and then watch it again with us. Ooh. Because it's really fucking funny. Yeah. The reason why it's one of my yeah. favorite Mel Brooks movies of all time. It really is, for me, a toss-up between this and Blazing Saddles, but I think Blazing Saddles just edges out because it's a little, I mean, more raw, raucous. That's a word. <laughs> it's a raucous film. Mm. <laughs> a lot of raucous. Yeah. Rock the ra- raucous the vote. <laughs> hmm. Half of the darling. That's how I want a girl to respond to my engagement. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Preferably like Michelle from Full House. She's like, you got it, dude. <laughs> that too. Yeah. 
He's marrying paper mache. Yeah. Paper mache. This is England. Ooh. <laughs> Nothing sexier than elbows. <laughs> Weenus touching. <laughs> and that's how she died of the black lawn. Do you actually know how Madeline Kahn died? <laughs> I don't. No? Cancer. <laughs> huh. He did just say Transylvania next. Which is a reference to the Chattanooga Choo Choo, which is also on track 29. Mm. Mm -hmm. An antiquated gag in 1979. (laughs) The freeze frame is what does it. (laughs) Those eyes. (laughs) Damn your eyes. Too late. Nice to know the hump is in the family line. Hmm. What hump? And humble, too. That's where Aerosmith gets it from. (laughs) Walk this way! I mean, it is. Talk this way! If it wasn't for this movie, we'd never got that song. It's true. All of it. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, you know, I've always, yeah, Terry Gar is awesome. She's mm-hmm. in Tootsie with Dustin Hoffman. Who's the better looking woman? <laughs> Hoffman or Gar? <laughs> it's tough. In, in Tootsie. <laughs> That's tough. But I'm going to have to go with Terry Gar. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you. Jake? Uh, I wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry. What would you say? <laughs> In the movie Tootsie, yes. who do you think makes a better woman? Tootsie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love that line. Suit yourself. I'm easy. <laughs> I say that a lot. Because I am. Uh, I like the way that that sound effect is used nowadays with like, uh, like uh, the 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 chipmunk mm-hmm. theme. This is the line I'll always remember from this. I mean, there's a lot of lines, but this is one of the first. Yeah, the the knockers. <laughs> <laughs> and and little Sam wakes up. Yeah. <laughs> Cut to shot of Val Kilmer dressed as Batman. <laughs> There's a throwback for you. I always thought she looked like Ruth Bader's Gin- Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I remember correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I probably am. Uh, but uh, the the gag with her name is that uh, it's like German for glue, and that's why the the horse is nay. Correct. Yeah. Kids didn't lie to me when I was a child. <laughs> they only lie to me now. <laughs> <laughs> Spikes the camera and everything. <laughs> the gag here, of course, that, you know, it's not actually lit. <laughs> <laughs> For me, like I like Mel Brooks when he's more subtle, and I think mm-hmm. this is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like I think this is one of his more subtle films. I think he loses a lot of his subtlety when he kind of gets older. Like you watch History of the World Part One, that's not a subtle fucking movie. You watch Spaceballs, Spaceballs isn't subtle at all. Yeah, and there's something to we be... ain't found shit. Yeah, you don't have to make. You know, subtle doesn't have to be good or funny, but it for me, I, I think it works better for, for Brooks. Yes. Remember that episode of The Office with like Jack Black and Jessica Alba mm. and her? <laughs> oh yeah, Horace Leachman. Yeah. And uh, Jim and Pam are talking about a totally different topic, and Andy thinks they're talking about the movie, and they're super deep. I 
Look, those candles are lit. Mm-hmm. An improvement. At least you can see something in this house. Mare? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's better than an is mare. Mm. fake wall or like a fake door you know bookcase door like this
So this being <clears throat> the big set piece where uh, they utilized a lot of the props from the original Frankenstein movies, uh, pretty much all the sciency looking stuff straight from that original like prop house uh, and sets and stuff like that. It's like an episode of Scooby Doo. <laughs> by by OJ Simpson <laughs> That's if I did it. Ah. <laughs> he tried to maintain the modicum of innocence. Yeah. I think he's the only person that still believes he's innocent. Reverse the neutron flow or reverse the polarity, sorry, of the neutron flow. I like how certain he sounds. Yep. Could you please pass the salt? Hmm.
<laughs> he'd need he'd need like two hearts and four lungs. It's a Victor Frankenstein thing. was like that transition Mm -hmm. and the fact that it's peter boyle from everybody loves raymond (laughs) (laughs) it's just an added bonus I usually add that it could be raining whenever someone says it could be worse. Few people get it and it makes me sad. Mm. (laughs) 
<laughs> I don't think I've ever actually read that sign. <clears throat> Oh, hey, not to give away what night we're uh, recording this, but Tatiana Maslany just won an Emmy. Or won an Emmy about half an hour ago. Yeah, so did Rami Malek. Nice. Good for them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is about Marty Feldman. Well, it's the eyes, of course. It's yeah. the fucking eyes. What am I even... <laughs> Oops. Peter Boyle. I love that gag. <laughs> the alternating hump? Yeah, because he'd show up on set with keep reversing it, and the uh, actors wouldn't know. Oh, <laughs> so it's a surprise to everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you just say yes, mustache? Sure. sure. It's what I'm going to remember, whether it's correct or not. Another beautiful thing about this, and I think uh, another reason why it's one of my favorite ones, but is that Mel Brooks found a way to almost perfectly mimic the cinematography of uh, 
of the time period that the original Frankenstein was made, and it's it's great. It's not just oh hey we turned the movie black and white, but it's actually like we figured out how to shoot it just like you know every you know that shit would have been done back then. Mm. <laughs> So, it was too dangerous for Igor to stay up there for fear of electrocution, but it's fine for Dr. Frankenstein. I see how it is. Yes, that fanaticism. Mm. And compassion towards Igor. (laughs) (laughs) To frame it more positively. (laughs) Oh shit, he burned his popcorn. Mm. It's always terrible when you burn your Peter Boyle. Mm. Mm. Especially when it's that real Peter Boyle, not the artificial Peter Boyle flavoring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody gets like store brand Peter Boyle. (laughs) (laughs) The Kirkland signature Peter Boyle. (laughs) It's like someone trying to wake me up in the morning. And they just give up and collapse on your chest. Yeah. One of these days we're going to be in a nice studio that doesn't have creaky chairs. and Silly mics. Yeah. And flies. Mm. I feel like the mics themselves are fine. <laughs> it's, it's really just yours, Josh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just overly sensitive. You got too good a mic. Yeah. yeah. Overly sensitive. Like me. You don't have to agree so hard, Sam. (laughs) (laughs) I'll do it on the record then, yeah. (laughs) It was funny because I was being overly sensitive about it. (laughs) Oh, that's like me waking up too. (laughs) (laughs) Is this the really sillyly dressed cowboy? Austrian. They're in Germany, God, or Transylvania, God. Damn it. <laughs> so, cowboy. Yeah. Yes, totally cowboys. All cowboys! <laughs> Don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. <laughs> Sam will yell at them. <laughs> Only in, unless they're the Waco kid. Ooh. There's another Gene. That's, that's Gene Wilder's character in Blazing Saddles. I do love the inspector from this plays the Nazi in the producers. Oh. Uh, that's right. Him being a reference to like I believe either Son of Frankenstein or Ghost of Frankenstein with the artificial hand. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> I can't remember. Is Doctor Strange live also in Mel Brooks, or is that? Oh no, no, it's that's Kubrick. Oh, that's right. The 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 him and the the the, the wheelchair guy in Doctor Strange live are it's too similar in my brain because the arm thing. Peter Sellers is the wheelchair. Is Doctor Strange love? Yeah. I actually need to like actually sit down and watch that. Like I would watch like half of it while I was in high school. Burr, burr. <laughs> That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, this. <laughs> <laughs> But we know. Oh, we know. I think now that I'm thinking about this film, and obviously, like, I'm starting to remember more and more of it as we're rewatching it, I think my favorite scene in the entire film. Is the Gene Hackman cameo, which was all filmed in a day and like kind of a last minute thing. Mm. I think he's uncredited as well. And then it was the audience. Why is he yelling at me?
<laughs> Set a gav. This is the scene that uh, Kevin Smith and Ralph Gar Garman highlighted when they were giving tribute to uh, to Gene Wilder on their podcast, Hallowed Babylon. And uh, I fucking love this scene so much. The zero to 60 that he goes. Mm -hmm. Like they were talking on the, on the podcast. Nobody was better. Nobody was better than Gene Wilder going zero to 60. <laughs> that was always a good gag. Me playing darts.
<laughs> nice little sight gag there. That and the tire, the front tire is where the other dart went. <laughs> and the back tire. No. <laughs> and the spare. <laughs> oh, but they really zero in on the back tire. He sounds uncertain. (laughs) (laughs) Never gets old. I know what boys like. What a good time. Yeah. It looked like she was about to start the sound of music. <laughs> the monster's alive with the sound of music. Well played, Chris. Well played. Sweet Jesus, what have I done? <laughs> Got in Himmel. I think she loves her flower. The subtlety of this movie. <laughs> If I didn't put Helga to bed, and you didn't put Helga to bed, who put Helga to bed? Hmm. 
I almost sent that one. <laughs> I was like, it wouldn't be right if I sent it. I do like Mel Brooks gives the uh, the German family a, a not traumatic end, you know, with the uh, little girl. Mm. Little girl. <laughs> but little Gene, girl, little girl. But Gene Hackman, on the other hand. I always forget about this bit. Like, even when you were like, yeah, Gene Hackman in the movie. And I'm like, Gene Hackman's in this movie? The world's greatest Lex Luthor. <laughs> if you insist. Yeah, that's not Michael <laughs> Rosenbaum. Weird thing to say to somebody. Uh, people say it all the time. That's just such a weird thing. Or shit like that, at least. I can sympathize, Peter Boyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's definitely accredited because I don't remember. I don't remember seeing him anywhere in the you know the, the opening because I feel like we would have been like Hackman. This can't end badly at all. <laughs> if I ever hang out with Gene Hackman, that's a <laughs> cigar. That's what she said. I don't know. That was bad. Blind man is this? The greatest worst blind man in the world. (laughs) 
kind of looks like Don Rickles <laughs> in that shot. Don Rickles. <laughs> Don Rickles. Funny. That's yeah. <laughs> How? <laughs> that's funny. Funny. That's funny. <laughs> Everyone can play the violin in Transylvania. And they all know that one song. <laughs> yes. Love will keep us together. <laughs> Who? Me?
<laughs> so you don't like the putting on the Ritz, Josh? Oh, I love the song. Just <laughs> I don't enjoy this part from the movie. I think it's a little unnecessary. Silly. Yeah. Like out of everything, this just sticks out the most. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun, dun. I will say the musical number in um, Blazing Saddles is when I tend to walk out of the room the most with Lily von Stupp. That's, that's your that's your shit scene. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's fair. <laughs> I mean, I'm. To be fair, if I wanted a musical Mel Brooks, I'd watch the producers. But you wouldn't, because his producers only has uh, the uh, the springtime Spring time. for Hitler. Yeah. The mm. musical is not. Well, I, I mean, yes, he had a hand in the musical, but his the producers is more of a straight show, right? Yeah. I will say personally, I prefer the full-on musical producers. Oh yeah, it's great. Uh, I think it's better. It, I think it certainly ages better because you know it's only like ten years old. Mm. <laughs> that and also, I saw the full musical first. Mm. Like I didn't even know that it was a movie before uh, before I saw the musical, and then like people were like, "Oh my god." Uh, blah blah blah. You know, like it's better or it's worse than you know the the original movie. And I'm like, there's a movie. You can go either way. Yeah. <laughs> it's a gateway drug. Musicals dumb. usually are. And sexual pleasure. <laughs> that woman waited a long time to react. Remember that scene in the Benicio del Toro Wolfman where they show off the Wolfman he in front of all the scientists and he kills like half of them? I do not, but yeah. I'll take your word for it. It's there. <laughs> I never saw it. It's How does it go for the Wolfman? It's painful. He turns on the Wolfman. It's yeah. awful for him. Yeah. I mean, it's maybe not the best movie. I no. uh, I only watched the unrated version. I prefer Benicio del Toro in that role in Big Top Pee Wee. Yeah, he plays the dog boy. Uh, yeah, it's his first movie before License to Kill. That's right. I believe so. Nice. Yeah. Honeymoon. Oh, yeah, Lights to Kill is eighty nine. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and, and um, greatest year for a film. Yeah, yeah. It's a good and one. Big Top Pee Wee, I think, is like eighty seven ish. <laughs> I'm gonna check now just for Posterity. accuracy. <laughs> yeah, because who knows? It might be ninety. It might be ninety one, or ninety two. Oh, or ninety three. 88. Or 94. The year before the greatest f- f- uh, year for film. Yeah, a little too soon. Yeah. That's why no one remembers it exists. That's, <laughs> I mean, it's fair. Hmm. Belly laugh. (laughs) Oh, God. Even if like, <laughs> even if the the whole previous of this movie sucked and it doesn't, it'd be worth it. Just sorry, Josh. It'd be worth it for this scene right here. Because it sets it up so much that you think 
maybe, just maybe, (laughs) he'll sing it. And not even close. <laughs> We've all been there, Gene Wilder. Where'd the lettuce come from? Who brings fresh fruit to a what was it? What's the line? Who brings tomatoes and eggs to a political rally? Yeah.
<laughs> Sorry. I bet he feels better now. <laughs> I know I do. Guy got all up in the <laughs> camera. This is my one chance. <laughs> Oof. You know, uh, you know what one of the movies to come out in 1989 was? I mean, I know you know a lot, but uh, Jason Takes Manhattan. I don't think we've ever mentioned that. It has my favorite Jason scene of all time, though. Yeah, the uh, punching the head off or the boombox scene. Kicking the boombox. Yeah. Gene Wilder walk with an erection. (laughs) (laughs) It's just how I walk with an erection. I have an erection. That's just how I walk. (laughs) (laughs) Because you perpetually have an erection. (laughs) That's how I brush my hair. (laughs) 
What an interesting choice. <laughs> what, the Battle Hymn of the Republic? Yeah. <laughs> So I pick up women. <laughs> Random tree. It's also what it sounds like when Sam takes a shit. <laughs> I find the meaning of life every time. <laughs> oh. Now, is it him singing or his asshole that sings like that? <laughs> it harmonizes. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly enough, his asshole takes the high part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Glad no one listens to these. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, our um, second, for the longest up until the Jesse Blaze Snyder interview, yeah. our most popular download for the month of September was the uh, Born Supremacy. <laughs> 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 and it's been a good month for, da- that was a good month for downloads, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's just like, okay, well, I guess. Well, if uh, you're as surprised as us that Sam has a harmonizing asshole, tweet at us. Yeah. Tell us about it. Yeah. Let me know what songs you want it to sing. <laughs> <laughs> you might see it on a live Facebook broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's at Geek Out Podcast. <laughs> It's an entire lifetime just for that one moment.
Is it real? It's my creation. Oh, now help him. <laughs> it's like indestructible hand. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's like a cover photo of just this image of the inspector going through. <laughs> 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 it looks like it just pops right back in yeah i don't think he has to build a new one but what the hell maybe the next one would be a little bit spiffier <laughs> yeah goes if you got the opportunity for the upgrade go for it <laughs>
So you were saying you had never seen this film all the way through before? Thus is correct. <laughs> How far did you get as far as you remembered? I don't remember. I don't remember most of the end, to be honest with you. Did you remember putting on the Ritz? Oh, yeah. I will say, watching this, though, like, I prefer non subtle Mel Brooks over their so subtle like kind Mel of Brooks. more like raucous Mel Brooks. Yeah. What's your favorite Mel Brooks film if you had to narrow Probably it? Probably Spaceballs. Mm. I mean, that has so much to do with Star Wars, obviously. But, sure. But, um, John Hurt reprising his role. Yeah. <laughs> from Alien. That's pretty. <laughs> not again. Yeah. A little, it's not another song and dance number from the Alien. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably my favorite instance of a song and dance number, even yeah. even over the the great one in this. Yeah. That might be my favorite moment in Spaceballs. Oh, like it's just so, first... yeah. Not again. <laughs> Check, please. <laughs> what did he have? The special. (laughs) (laughs) The Statue of Liberty is just the top of the, of the, whatever the fuck the spacecraft is. Spaceball (laughs) one. Yeah, and it lands on the (laughs) Planet of the Apes. What's that coming out of its nose? (laughs) Spaceball, sir. Well, there goes the planet. (laughs) (laughs) She's gone from suck to blow. (laughs) What would you say your guy's favorite uh, Mel Brooks film is? I'm pretty sure it's this one. Blazing Saddles. Yeah, I'm right there with you. <laughs> the enormous fun sucker. <laughs> 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 Wonderful close up. <laughs> that that should be the cover yeah. photo. <laughs> <laughs> or that. And that's what it sounds like when Sam orgasms. <laughs> yeah. I ha I I have somebody playing a ram's horn. Yeah. It's very, very, very Yiddish. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing I've learned about Sam. So his sexual organs are very Yiddish. <laughs> Oy vey. <laughs> so any uh, any. Oh, he is credited. I guess yeah. in the yeah, I guess yeah. at the end. Yeah. Blind man. Yeah. What'd you guys uh, think revisiting this flick? Wunderbar. <laughs> Wunderbar. Oh, it's a treat every time you get to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think, Sam? I always enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no one, no one was accusing you of not. No, you just asked. You just asked. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> and this has been another Halloween Horror Month, man. We got another movie series for you that isn't as long as Star Trek. Hey! Yay! Oh! <laughs> it's for a movie coming out, you know, this year that ties into this continuity, this larger continuity. You'll see what it is next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, this has been another Geek Out Commentary. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jay. I'm Josh. Happy Halloween. This has been another Geek Out production. If you enjoyed what you heard, hey, you know, we've got a new commentary every Monday. We've got a special episode every Friday. Of course, there's the usual catching up show every Wednesday. And you get book club episodes just about every Tuesday these days. Thanks for listening. <laughs>